And I'm Matt. We got a brand new custom rig on a Sprinter 170 chassis. Pretty excited about this thing. Got a lot of cool, unique features that we developed with the client. And uh, so we're here to show you those and uh, get you guys feedback. So make sure to do the video, comment. We'll do our best to answer those questions. Check us out on titanvans.com, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, here we go. So 170 chassis, this is the four x four model. Uh, we upgraded the wheels and tires. So we have some black Rhino rims um, down here wrapped with some BFG TKOs. Uh, these are 26570 R17s. That's about as big as you can fit on a four x four rig. Two wheel drive models, you gotta go a little bit smaller. So let's go to the uh, money side. So this rig, we went for a very spacious, kind of full-time living design. Uh, jump up inside here and start to show you some of the features. So you can see uh, we have solid ash uh, butcher block countertops and tabletops. So this guy here is a fold down top, simply underneath, a couple clips to release and folds down. Stows against the wall, it gives, gives you additional living space. Uh, we do have some clips here on the sides. You can throw a strap across of it to keep any kind of rattles down when you're going down those washboardy roads. Um, you can see the windows. We did CR Lawrence uh, T vent windows, uh, as we have here on the driver's side. We also have it on the slider door, and we have a couple of uh, half sliders here in the back of the van. Up top over here, we have some overhead cabinets. So this is all of our walnut laminate. So this is kind of one of our in-stock in-house laminates that we utilize. Rim latches on all the cabinets. They have the hydraulic lifts on everything. You can see some nice ample uh, storage throughout. Um, you know, this is kind of for clothing, food, storage, pots, pans, all the little knickknacks that you need for uh, on, the, on the road living. All soft clothes on everything and then press to lock the, um, the door faces in place. You can see up top here as well, we've integrated some um, L-Track pucks. So these just have a quick release function. So very simple little mechanism there, but an extremely strong connection point. Uh, we put these in at the client's request for uh, stowing surfboards up overhead. So they'll be able to run straps in between, slide the surfboards in, strap them to the ceiling, get them up out of the way while he's traveling. You can drop them down while he's utilizing the space. Um, obviously they're good for a lot of things. You can put some climbing, holds on there for uh, training in the van, um, even just clipping a backpack or hanging things up. It's just kind of a nice little function there. And you know, all of these can clip right out and be utilized in any of other uh, L-Track locations, mostly in the garage area, which we'll get to. So moving on to the galley, uh, we have another flip up table off the side here. Nice 500 pound table, super strong, holds a lot of weight, really durable. Uh, again, the ash tops here uh, make for a really nice contrast between the walnut laminate. A couple outlets and USB ports so you can uh, plug in your appliances right there at the, the countertop. The main galley itself is composed of two burner induction cooktop. So this is a marine cooktop. Um, it is powered off the inverter, which is powered by the battery system. So in this rig, we used a 300 amp hour lithium ion battery bank. This guy on high pulls about 1800 watts, but very rarely, if you're familiar with induction, will you actually run these guys on high. So on kind of like a scale of one to 10, we find most clients are running these things on two to three. Um, so 1800 watts on high, more realistic draws that we've seen people actually using probably in the 700 to 800 watt range. So uh, much lower energy draw. So at that rate, you know, that battery, you'd be able to run this thing eight hours pretty easily. Um, and um, yeah, you'd be able to cook some pretty good meals on there. And you know, rarely you're gonna have like eight hours worth of cooking. So you'll also be able to power to, we use an electric hot water heater, which we'll get to in the back, uh, electric fridge down below. So. You know, this entire rig is essentially electric powered, um, all off of the battery. And uh, we do have uh, the only other type of appliance is a diesel 
uh, Webasto furnace. And for this size of a rig, we definitely recommend the Evo 40 uh, over the 2000 ST. So Evo 40 is a bit bigger, twice the amount of BTUs, uh, definitely for this amount of volume to trying to heat up, especially for the wintertime use. Um, definitely the Evo 40 is the way to go. So back to the galley. Um, see nice modern faucet pull down with a sprayer option there uh, and a control valve on the side over here we have the sink uh, kind of standard if you've seen some of our Id other videos um, nice deep sink you know well sized everything's pretty tight on this galley we were able to squeeze everything in here but uh, it was definitely a challenge to make everything work together but came out pretty clean uh, the fridge down below uh, is a isotherm. Uh, this is their new Elegance. So this is what uh, they're no longer offering their cruise model. So the Elegance 130 here. Uh, and same features. The only thing they changed here is a center mount handle, uh, which allows you to quickly switch the hinges. So if you want to have it be a left swing or a right swing, you can very quickly switch that up and the handle just stays centrally located versus the cruise where you had to switch the handle. Um, the one downside to that, it is a little awkward to open. We find once you kind of figure it out, you know, it's really not too bad. They kind of have to know which side it's swinging on, uh, to get it, get used to that. So, um, nice little fridge though, small freezer up on top. So if you're big on the freezers, um, you know, a great option from Isotherm is to go for the drawer 130, uh, has a much larger, um, freezer area up top, a little bit smaller on the fridge compartment side, and it is a drawer style. So rather than swinging open like this, um, the entire face plate will slide out. And we have some of those in some of our other videos that you can check out. And that's a really nice option if you want a little bit more freezer space. Um, over here, we do have some additional storage. So a couple of uh, small storage compartment down below. And then our kind of standard bamboo drawers that pull out both top and bottom. Everything's on soft close. Uh, and we utilize these rim latches kind of throughout the design just because they are pretty bulletproof latches, nice clean look, kind of match the aesthetics of our designs. Um, jump back here for just a moment, the seat. So have a nice uh, little seating area. Once you swivel the two front seats, you kind of makes a nice little communal area to hang out. You flip up the table, have a nice area for eating dinner, hanging out, playing cards on those snowy, rainy days. Uh, so yeah, definitely kind of pulls in, makes a little bit more of a communal space here. Uh, the cushions clip on back here. So uh, we have some nice little snaps that we integrated into the cushions uh, to keep everything from flying around while you're zooming down the highway. Same with the bottom one is clipped into place and then lots of storage underneath. So kind of design the cushions to allow you to open it up without having to take any of the cushion, cushions off and tons of just kind of bulk storage down below. So one of the coolest things about this rig, the shower, dry locker slash sauna. You heard right, sauna in a van. This is one of the first that we uh, came up with. Uh, so we wanted to kind of make a shower, toilet, storage sauna area that um you know we didn't want to just put just a shower in a van so we wanted to you know have it be multifaceted give you a lot of different options so we kind of tried to pack as much as we could into this thing and give you tons of functionality so uh have a little additional catch here just in case the door decides to swing open on you um let's see this is a 24 inch deep by 30 inch wide we have a touch light up on top so it has a red light for nighttime use press and hold and it just shuts off so you don't have to go to the white light click again back to the red one more time and you have white and then it is dimmable and can brighten we'll go full brightness here for the video so you guys can get a good look inside let me step out of the way and let her get a shot of there So you can see we've packed in a lot of different functionality. We want to give the client as many options inside as possible. So a lot of L-Track uh, mounted on the walls. Uh, so that gives a lot of options for, for storage. Um, slide back in here. So mounted on the walls, the L-Track, same sort of uh, fittings that you saw on those upper L-Tracks. So you can utilize these here. 
So uh, this client is a really big skier, so the idea was he can throw his skis, his boots in here, start cranking the heater, and you can actually see down here is the vent for the heater. So this will allow you to control, so you can shut it off, so you don't have to put any hot air into the shower stall. Uh, but if you want to heat it up in here, you can open that up, crank some heat in here, uh, get the skis, boots to dry out. They'll drip dry and they'll just drain right into the gray water tank that's mounted up underneath the vehicle. Uh, so we designed this little base plate here with some slats. Uh, it's a stainless steel basin, but we wanted to give them a nice durable platform to stand on. Um, and um, that's something that's a little bit easier to clean. So you can pull that out, rinse it off, throw it back in. Um, the other option, obviously, like I said, the uh, sauna. Pull everything out of here. You can leave the toilet in, crank the heat in here. Uh, the max output on these diesel furnaces is about 135 degree air. It will get extremely hot inside this uh, shower stall very quickly. Uh, you can get in, get your sweat on, quickly rinse off with the shower head. Um, so, you know, nice little function there. Um, and then, you know, if you want to use it just as kind of pure drying, you can also, you can see we installed these, the same sort of pucks up here. And there's one on each side. It's a little hard to see on this far side, but um, we have one on each side. You can string a line across or a strap across and then hang your clothes up, your jacket. So if you're on the road and you have to wash your clothes, wash some stuff in the sink, you know, even drying out towels can be a problem when you're traveling. Throw them in the shower, hang them up, get the furnace cranking. Use this as kind of like your dry box. Everything can drip dry down at the bottom. So again, lots of ideas, lots of functionality here. Uh, so we, yeah, we're pretty excited about this. And then obviously the, the commode. Um, the toilet here is a cassette toilet. So this is one that we utilize with a lot of our designs. We've done the composting toilets in the past, but one size is a lot bigger. Two, they need DC power, uh, which is not a huge deal, but you know another kind of consideration. And they also need a vent tube to go outside. So the DC power is actually power fan, and then you have to blow that air out the bottom of the van. So it's just a lot more integrated where these cassette toilets really, I mean, really, really simple. Uh, not a whole lot to them. Uh, they have a little water reservoir on the top. So you have this little fill here. Um, you can fill up water here. This is a little pump. So you give it a couple of pumps, it'll pressurize the water system. And then the button on the front here, when you press it, it'll spray a little water for the rinse. Um, when you want to go ahead and dump it and clean it, one of the nice little features, so with that built-in base, you have a quick release function down here. It might be a little hard to see, but you slide this little tab out of the front of the toilet, and then the whole unit just lifts right up and out. So very fast to just get it out, get it... Uh, uh, somewhere where you can dump it and then it's a two-part um, section so here in the back you just lift on this little lever and it separates the two units this is the water reservoir you can see just you know, really simple it's just hold some water has the pump and it's the seat set that off to the side and then this is the cassette um, so this guy swivels over you can open the valve uh, it kind of has this is the dump um, kind of elbow here and then the main valve here. So this is the knife valve. So there's no really smells associated with this. It really does a good job of kind of keeping everything enclosed. Um, there's the knife valve right there. So this is kind of where all the liquids and solids are held. Close it. And then uh, when you do go to dump, it just has this little breather tube so that you open that up, go to dump it. Uh, you can take it to like, you know, restrooms, um, you know, kind of um, rest stops, porta potties, trailheads, you know, that's kind of where you can dump. And you can also go to RV dump sites um, and dump these guys. So pretty straight ahead on these, uh, but it's a nice little option. Um, you know, we kind of tell a lot of people that, you know, my, my thoughts on these is that it's more of a, you know, use it when you have to, they're designed to be used. Um, but most of our clients, you know, you're going to find a coffee shop, a trailhead, uh, you know, grab some food in the morning and you know use the restrooms there but it's really nice to have an option for the middle of the night get up um, use the restroom uh, and then if you're on the road and you need some place to go you know these things designed to, to do that and it does it great so really simple design um, and then just integrate right back in so if you want to get a shot have that guy mount really simple a couple of clips in the back so those are two hooks in the back 
and then this thing slots down that front part and that clip that I showed you helps to uh, secure that. So this guy just slides right in the back, that simple. And then this is kind of like a little kind of key, the linch pin right in the front, clips in and there it is, all secure. So that's the toilet. Last little function we kind of designed here. We, were, we didn't really want this thing slapping around while people were driving. So we also made this whole shower assembly a quick disconnect. So these are some medical grade uh, water quick disconnect fittings. What's nice about them is if you actually get a close up on that interior shot there, these guys, as soon as you disconnect them, they actually seal. So both, so you can see when that thing releases, there's that little spring loaded tip, it shuts. So you're not gonna get any back draining out of the shower. So even though there might be water in this line, you won't actually get that water leaking all over the place when you go to store this thing. And then the same with the shower side that's actually on the wall. It also seals immediately. So you just end up with that nice little fitting. You can pull this guy off. Oops. Um, pull this guy off and then store this to the side uh, when you go to um, hit the road. So that's that guy. We'll just set it here for now. Get this guy closed up. And then we'll move on to the bed. So almost a king size bed back here. Um, really large, just over, it's six foot four inches long and about almost six foot one wide. So nice, big, spacious bed, two, three people up here, no problem. Um, so we wanted to you know, give a nice ample area, uh, additional cabinet back here, some overhead storage for clothing and you know, kind of a phone, wallet, laptop while you're up in bed, nice little place to store some stuff up there, but same as uh, what we showed you up front. Here on the partition, uh, you can actually see we have additional register covers. So this is also where the hot air comes out. So that same register that we showed you in the shower is also connected to these guys. So you can shut the one in the shower, open these up and just blast the hot air all inside. Um, or, you know, vice versa, shut all these guys and blast all the hot air into the shower sauna um, dryer box there. So some nice options. They're all on swivel so you can open up the louvers swivel the head there and you know kind of direct the airflow where you need it down below it's just a single door here and that's a full pass through to underneath the bed and we kind of sunk in this little switch right here it's kind of a little hidden switch uh, that allows you to do the load lights underneath so we'll get to we'll swing around the back show you guys that a little more in detail but kind of nice you can throw your bags in here uh, still have access to stuff if you need to jump underneath uh, and quick way to get your lights on underneath before you um, start scrounging around for stuff. So that's it for up here. Let's swing around in the back. We'll pop the doors. We'll show you what we got going on there. switch here articulates the lights um, we really love how this came out super clean super functional gives you a lot of utility space for storing things um, you can see immediately we have some more l track right here in the floor it gives you a lot of good connection points for cargo control bikes um, you know whatever you're trying to carry it gives you uh, some great connection points uh, we utilized our kind of our kerf wall part so these are some nice little quick connections here. So we designed a ski rack for this guy so we can throw some skis in place. Uh, but you can see it kind of utilizes these little hooks here. And then we actually designed right into the cabinet face a little uh, receptacle for those. So simply place in, clip down, kind of snugs into place, and that's it. Uh, we've designed these to hold surfboards, skis, kayaks, uh, bike helmets, shoes, all sorts of different things. So there's lots of different functionality with these. Uh, and really quick exchanges if you need to switch things up. So um, here's our kind of utility area here. So we have our water fill, have our spray down shower. So we utilize the same components uh, as in the shower for our rear spray down shower. Control valve down below. So this controls whether the water is off 
on or we can drain right out the bottom of the vehicle. So pretty similar to some of our other vans if you've seen some of our videos. Have a little switch right here. So you can click that switch on and you can actually see it illuminates back here. So we actually do a little tank backlight. So here's our water tank right here. And when you hit the light, uh, you can see the water level is pretty low, so you won't be able to see it right now. But, you know, it kind of gives the van a little shake, and you can very quickly see what your water level is. And as you go to fill as well, it's a nice little feature, so you can kind of keep an eye on it. If it does over, if you fill it up all the way, we have an overfill tube that goes right out the bottom of the van. So, you know, never going to flood the van from too much water. Um, so, uh, yeah, but it is nice to be able to at least see the levels uh, when you're when you're on the road. So over here on the side, we have our utility panel uh, and kind of electrical storage area. So we have our solar charge controller, fuse block, battery switch, uh, our large fuse, fuse bus bar here for the inverter, uh, charging from the alternator and so forth. Um, but we like to keep everything really nice, tight and clean. So you only see what you need to use Tucked over here is our inverter. So this is an inverter charger. It has a built-in 80 amp charger. It's a 2000 watt continuous inverter. It is the Freedom XC2000. Highly recommend this unit. It is programmable for different types of batteries. Um, gives you lots of good information when uh, from the interface there. So yeah, really great unit. Um, back here is a bit more just utility storage. So you got a lot of nice, just kind of bulk storage back there. Um, you know, it's kind of where you throw all the, you know, chains and um, hoses, extension cords, kind of all that stuff you don't need access to every day, but needs a home. Uh, that's a great space for it. You can see back there, we actually have the water lines coming through. So if you notice this walnut across the top here, this is actually where our pass through is. So we like to keep everything super nice and tight. We don't like, you know, having water lines exposed. So hot and cold water run across that, as well as the ducting that you, we saw, those register covers on the front. So that's where everything is, is hidden inside there. Uh, if you see in this back corner back here, uh, there's another register cover. So we also wanted to give you the ability to heat in the cargo area if necessary. So depending on what you were carrying back here, we wanted to make sure you could get some hot air underneath the bed and not just kind of leave, leave this as kind of the frigid zone and you know everything else stays warm. So options, it has the louvers on as well. So if you don't care about heating up underneath here and you want all the heat up front, close it off, crank it up front, you know, you're all set there. Um, you can see some additional utility points here. We just like to give lots of options. So that same quick disconnect, you can quickly throw them on to any point. Uh, you know, pretty common in a lot of van conversions these days. Really nice, useful. Let me pop the hood on this, and you guys can see underneath here some nice So one of the big things we do here at Titan Vans, we love to make things really serviceable, quick to access, um, and you know, have the space and design so that things can be switched out because things do fail, parts do wear out, uh, and you want ways to really you know, get inside there, switch them out, keep everything nice and clean, uh, routed properly, managed properly. Uh, and that to me is like a good sign of a, a great design. It's something that not only beautiful, durable, um, but also extremely serviceable because you know these are on the road. They got a lot of uh, vibrations happening. We build everything to withstand all those vibrations. But if a part fails, we want to be able to get to it, switch it out. You know, and make sure we take care of our customers. So uh, I'll talk about some of the different items here. So um, here is our electric hot water heater. So this is a Isotemp Slim hot water heater. 750 watt heating element. It does have the option to also tie it into a coolant loop. So if you want to attach it to the engine radiator, you can generate hot water that way. We don't tend to use it in that sort of situation. I like to keep the engine coolant completely separate in like an isolated system so that the car can always do its thing and be a car. But the electric heating element works really great. It takes about 45 minutes to heat up four gallons. It's not on demand. Um, it does store four gallons. 
and then here you can see a pre-mixing valve. So if you see this little line here, it actually comes from the cold water, comes up to the hot water output. So this allows you to control temperature right as it's coming out. So this is before it actually gets to your shower or your faucet valve. So that's a really nice feature. So what this thing actually does is overheat the water to like near scalding temperature. Then with this pre-mixing valve, we step that temperature down to a more reasonable hot water. So that four gallons, you can really stretch to, you know, easily eight gallons of nice hot water. Uh, 22 gallon water tank. So between the two, you got about 26 gallons of total water capacity. Um, have our water pump down here, control valves, and kind of all the plumbing you see to make things happen. Just over the top here, it's a little bit hard to see, but we do have the Evo 40 is actually tucked right here. So one of the nice things about this is we actually um, pop some holes inside the uh, ducting here on the Evo 40 inside this cabinet, which allows some of the hot air to actually circulate inside this utility cabinet and keep our water system and all of our plumbing warm during those winter months. So we really wanted to try and make this like as much of a four season camper as we could. So we wanted to keep all the water and heating, you know, consolidated into one area. And um, so that's a really neat feature of this guy as well as, you know, this is, uh, this client's a big surfer and he's a big skier. He's going to be, you know, spending 40, 50 days a year at the resorts. And so we wanted to have, you know, a way to keep that water system up and running as long as that furnace is going. You know, once you turn the furnace off, you know, it's impossible to keep things warm. But as long as you got that furnace running, it's going to be keeping your entire water system fully heated. And keep in mind that pass through where some of our plumbing runs is also where our hot ducting runs. So it's mounted right to the water pipes. So when that ducting is, you know, when the furnace is running, that ducting is nice and warm keeps those water pipes from being able to freeze. Um, and so, yeah, it's a nice nice added benefit and kind of just another part of the design here that we integrated to try and kind of round out the, uh, the utility of this design. So, hope you got some good ideas. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them below. We'll do our best to answer them. Uh, like I said before, check, out, check us out online, Facebook and Twitter. Lots of good information, products, all sorts of things coming your way. We appreciate you watching and uh, Stay tuned for more from Titan Vans.